Richard Lloyd Parry of the Times, does the North Korean government of Kim Jong-un have a right to exist? Um, let me answer this way. Um, I think the Korean Peninsula is a showcase of the difference between an authoritarian dictatorship and a society built on political liberty and free market economy. Look at this dynamic city, Seoul, and see what freedom can bring. Um, the people in South Korea, in the Republic of Korea, enjoy a high standard of living. The Republic of Korea has, during recent years, moved towards being one of the most prosperous countries in the world. This is what freedom can bring. In stark contrast to that, you see just 40 kilometers north of here, a suppressed people suffering from poverty. Um, and I think that is an answer in itself. So does North Korea have a right to exist? <laughs> it's a strange way of putting it, um, uh, that, that question. Uh, I, I don't think you doubt my personal belief uh, in, in that respect. Uh, I mean, I am the Secretary General of uh, a security organization that is not just a military organization, but also a community of values such values as individual liberty, democracy, uh, the rule of law, exactly those values that have made the Republic of Korea so uh, prosperous. So I don't think you are in any doubt uh, what would be my uh, preference. Um, but let me put it this way, I hope to see uh, the tensions in the Korean Peninsula solved uh, peacefully. I would like to commend the president and the government of the Republic of Korea for their efforts to find peaceful solutions through dialogue. Uh, and I urge the North Korean leadership to do the same. Lady in the second row. Well, I, for understandable reasons, I, I can't go into uh, details, um, but I can tell you that uh, NATO, as such, is also subject to cyber attacks. So we had a lot. We have a lot of experience uh, in in that field, and individual NATO allies uh, have a lot of uh, experience. Uh, and obviously, if we are to address um, cyber defense effectively, we must realize that it is a cross-border issue. So we need cooperation across borders um, among like-minded uh, nations. So I think one important aspect of cooperation on cyber defense is to exchange experience. Uh, to exchange uh, lessons learned with the aim to strengthen uh, the national uh, cyber defenses. I can mention as an example uh, that we have um, a NATO center of excellence um, 
on uh, cyber security located uh, in uh, the capital of our ally Estonia, Tallinn. Uh, and uh, it's not by accident that it's located in Estonia, because some years ago Estonia suffered uh, from a massive uh, cyber attack, and that was really an eye-opener. Uh, so we have done a lot since then to strengthen our cyber defense. Uh, NATO as such uh, has strengthened the defense of our own uh, systems, uh, and uh, NATO allies have done a lot to strengthen their uh, cyber defense. And I think uh, the Republic of Korea and other partners could profit uh, from an exchange of experience and lessons learned. Gentlemen over there, I think you even have a microphone. kind of wanted peace, durable peace, and they had a critical um, interest in entrenching peace in Europe. So do you think that it would be possible for South Korea or any other parties to involve in, in another Helsinki process here on the peninsula to uh, resolve any issues in, in um, surrounding North Korea? Um, indeed, I, I had an interesting exchange of views uh, with both the foreign minister and the president uh, on this um, um, very perspective idea uh, to initiate uh, a similar process in Northeast uh, Asia. Um, as you may recall, um, at the height of uh, the Cold War in the 70s, the so-called Helsinki process was initiated uh, in Europe. The aim of that process was to promote um, confidence building, security building, uh, more transparency, uh, refined uh, arms control regimes, um, and no doubt that this uh, Helsinki process made an important contribution to the end uh, of the Cold War. And in general, at least, it uh, contributed to uh, creating um, more confidence and more security uh, in uh, Europe. Um, I think elements from that experience could be used uh, in uh, Northeast uh, Asia, and that's why I find the interest, uh, the idea, uh, very uh, interesting. And I also offer today in our meetings uh, that uh, our people uh, can uh, provide. Uh, relevant information about our experience uh, in, in that uh, field. In general, I think, in general, I think uh, the Asia-Pacific uh, region um, needs more multilateral structures to ensure peaceful solution of uh, conflicts. Again, I think uh, Europe can serve uh, as a positive uh, example. Uh, after the Second World War, we established um, multilateral structures. We established NATO in 1949. Uh, NATO was and NATO is still the bedrock uh, of uh, security uh, in the Euro-Atlantic area. In the late 50s, um, the European Union uh, was uh, established and has since been enlarged. Uh, and today, it serves as the framework for a very strong political and economic uh, cooperation uh, in Europe. So we have succeeded uh, after the Second World War to build a Europe whole, free, and at peace, thanks to these multilateral structures that ensure dialogue, confidence building, uh, and um, more um, uh, integration. And I think other parts of the world could 
learn from that positive experience. Gentleman over there, please wait for the microphone. It's coming. Uh, for the benefit of Korean speakers, I'd like to ask questions in Korean. Uh, 사무총장님께서는 그 북한이 핵무기를 소용화해서 그것을 그들의 미사일에 합체할 수 있는 능력이 있다고 보십니까? Um, I won't go uh, into uh, details uh, on the intelligence that NATO allies uh, uh, might have uh, in, in that uh, respect. Uh, what I can say is uh, that the pro provocative rhetoric and the provocative actions uh, by the North Korean uh, regime uh, are matters uh, of uh, great concern, and that's why uh, it is essential uh, that the international community as such uh, sends uh, a unified and very strong message uh, to the North Korean uh, regime um, that it should resume political dialogue and uh, comply uh, with uh, the relevant United Nations Security Council uh, resolutions. One last question over there. Yes, Chan Jil Boe, English teacher. Manjo, question. I want to ask you is, what is the probability of missile launch from North Korea? And what is the probability of the well, uh, obviously, we don't know much about uh, what is uh, the real intention uh, of uh, the North Korean uh, leadership. But we do know from the past, and we do know from what has actually happened, uh, that uh, North Korea has the capacity to um, uh, launch missiles. They have uh, done uh, nuclear tests. Um, and that's enough uh, to express grave concern um, and again, I think it's essential that um, the international community stands united uh, and, and sends that very clear message uh, to North Korea that the way forward is, to, is, is dialogue, the way forward is uh, to find uh, peaceful solutions, uh, and of course the international community uh, expects uh, North Korea uh, to comply uh, with uh, the United Nations Security Council uh, resolutions. Thank you very much.